Hey, so we're looking at some more solo building tools today. We're gonna to look at combining elements uh, in a way that you can practice uh, that's gonna make your runs and your lines sound more intentional, sound more like solos and less like scales. Again, so the reason this is worth practicing is because uh, a lot of you know intermediate and even some advanced players spend an awful lot of time practicing scales um, and running them endlessly. Uh, but never really sort of turning them into something that sounds satisfying. You know, I meet a lot of people who kind of, you know, uh, can play all the material, but they don't feel like they're actually connecting and playing a sort of meaningful solo, if you like, or they're, they're not playing what they're hearing in their head. And it's because they're not practicing what they're hearing in their head. They're practicing just a scale pattern or something they're reading from a book. So we still want to practice our scale lines. We still want to think in terms of scales or arpeggios or whatever it might be, because we want to connect with you know, whatever chord progression or whatever harmony we're playing with. Um, but we want to play it and practice it in such a way that it's, you know, it's something melodic. It's something that's got all those stylistic elements that we're hearing in our head when we think of, you know, an exciting kind of guitar solo. So as soon as possible, you know, once we've learned a scale, once we've got it actually memorized and we feel like it's really sort of, you know, under our fingers, we want to start sort of tearing that apart as soon as we can and start actually then using it for something, you know, taking the elements of that scale and using it in a song, you know, improvising with it or whatever, or writing solos with it, you know, even better actually, you know, constructing something where you purposely sort of include all those things you want to include in your lines, slides, bends, whatever it might be, but you know, you're aiming for a finished product, a piece of music. So today we're gonna to take a look at sort of combining some string bends uh, and more sort of kind of, you know, melodic lines, slower lines uh, with some runs, you know, so we're going to sort of uh, try and mix things up a little bit, um, but into, say, a, a pattern that you could kind of practice. Um, and I'm going to give you a couple of different examples today, but really what I would suggest doing is, you know, maybe taking these as an idea, as a starting point, but scales that you know, uh, scales that you're really familiar with, taking those and designing your own versions of these as many different ways as you possibly can. Okay, so first off, what we're going to do is we're going to take a very typical kind of pentatonic line. We'll do it up here in good old E minor pentatonic. Yeah, we're going to play in that position up there and we're going to kind of combine now a few different little elements. Okay, so we're going to do some hammer-ons and pull-offs. We're going to play kind of a little on the legato side, really. Yeah, a little of that. And then we want to think about if we were sort of, you know, putting a run like that into a solo, you know, our aim wouldn't be to just endlessly play this run that never stops. We want to sort of have some sort of crescendo point, some sort of, you know, uh, something where we reach a peak in the line. So for that purpose, then what I'm going to add in here is just like a string bend, a slightly more melodic element at the top. So we're going to do an ascending kind of run into some string bends. Okay, so something along the lines of... All right, so all we're doing there is we're taking sort of you know, from the midpoint of that E minor pentatonic shape onwards, from the D string, we're going to construct this little repeating sequence. Yeah, and once we get to that point, we're going to then hit this F sharp on the high F sharp on the E string, and we're going to bend that note up to a G. And then we're going to bend back down. And then we're going to hit this note D on the B string there, and we're going to bend that up to an E, up to the root note. Okay. And that's the kind of thing you can kind of practice, you know, as a line. Again, you design your own version, you don't have to play this one, but something like that, which is combining, you know, a run, it's combining sort of a little sequence there, you've got some hammer-ons and pull-offs, some legato type things, you've got string bends, uh, but you've got a thing that sounds like you know a segment of a solo it doesn't just sound like we're going all right let's play something with a slightly different feel to it a different voicing we'll do something dorian down in this region of the neck so it'll be something like so basically we're playing a c sharp dorian uh, scale pattern here and as with the first example we're not going to start at the bottom of the scale and play all the way to the top and then do something we're going to jump in in the middle of the scale and you know not go all the way to the top we're going to just kind of find a, a sweet spot find a melodic point where we want to finish our line so again an, another thing we're doing with these examples with these exercises is we're 
playing scales as we might actually use them in a solo. We're not going to start at the bottom and go all the way up to the top and just run back down again. You know, that's what we want to avoid doing. That's what we're really doing when we're practicing scales. We're just going up and down the lines. That's okay to a point, but then we want to throw that away and start actually taking segments. So, you know, as I've done in a previous lesson, looking at how to break out scale patterns, you know, we want to kind of jump in in the middle of the scale as often as possible, or just pick out the notes we want, you know, in the region of the neck where we want to, you know, make our statement. So just an ascending legato pattern, sort of a little sequence. But once we get to this point, we're going to then bend that note, make that our little melodic line, and kind of cut our way back through the scale, back down. Where we can kind of, we're playing the minor third there, you know, we're going to resolve on that minor third, but we're kind of, you know, resolving, you know, somewhere in and around the root note there. So again, with this example, same thing, you know, take it as a starting point, have a go at it, playing it, and then throw it out and do your own version. You know, with any good solo in any genre, any guitar player that you like listening to, there's, there's some combination of that, you know, more kind of laid back melodic element with then sort of the fireworks on the other side. But if they're doing just one thing all the time, you know, it gets tired really quickly. You know, it gets tiring to listen to. And if we think of the great players, you know, that people will pay big money to go and watch, you know, they've got that ability to give you just enough of both, just enough of the fireworks and enough of the melodic stuff to keep it musical, to keep it sounding interesting, but then keep that, you know, excitement there.